is precious. And the life of health workers is fairly precious to all of us. And I don't want to be defensive or answer for the government. Um, where they have not done well, I would always say, and I'm saying that a government has the responsibility to protect its self workers uh, generally because they are in the first line of defense to save lives of our people. And I have I've been actually misquoted and sometimes ver verified for some remarks I made when um, I appealed to our doctors. To go back to work, yeah, the yeah. nurses. Because I say that, um, yes, the government must protect workers. But at the same time, the doctors and the nurses have also a calling. The oath that they take is to protect life, you know, um, at, at all costs, protect their lives first, but also to protect life of human beings. And um, the, the demand that we're making, if it's justified, look at the ability of the government to meet them. At this point? At this point. Yes. So what I was saying is that I, I think that it is not right to down tools at the time when they needed most. They needed most. Your comment. All right, and that's what uh, the ODM leader, Raila Odinga, had to say yesterday. And uh, we want to now focus on the medical uh, officers' uh, strike, uh, the you know, uh, um, nurses. And we are now joined by Boaz Onchari, who's the chair of Nurses Union, Nairobi County, and Peterson Washira, who's the chair of Kenya Union of Clinical Officers. Uh, let me start with you, Peterson. Your comments or maybe thoughts on what uh, the ODM leader had to say, that... It is not right for you to down your tools now at a very critical time. What would you say to that? What, do you, what would your answer to that be? Uh, thank you, Michael, and uh, thanks for having me. Uh, indeed, I listened to the whole conversation, and I must say that uh, sometimes I feel that our leaders are not in touch with the ground, and they are not in touch with the issues and the grievances that we may be raising though we explain them every day. Yes, we took an oath, all of us, to protect life. But the question I want to ask today is, does that life include my own life? And then number two, we have become, and we have said this in the past, we have become the super spreaders. Number one, we do not have the right PPE, so we get infection. We infect the patients who are coming to see us, who do not have uh, corona, and because their immunity is low, they will then suffer the symptoms, they transmit to the community, we transmit to our families, they interact with the community, and they also spread to the community. So we reached a point when we could not actually be able to protect the lives as we swore to do, and we found that we actually threatening it by continuing to work under an environment that presents an eminent uh, risk to, to our health mm -hmm. and to our patients. And that is why we took this direction to ensure that we step out, to ensure that the environment is safe so that we protect ourselves and we protect the patient and the community by ensuring that we are not the ones who are actually propagating the spread of the infections because that is what has been happening. All right. Let me hear from Boaz on Chari. Your, if you had an opportunity to respond to Raila's comment where he says it's not right for you to down your tools at a very critical time, what would your answer to that be? Thank you. If I had a chance, now I have a chance to respond to his honorable uh, the, uh, former prime minister, Raila Odinga. I want to start by telling him that we are also Kenyans living in this same country. It is good for him to come into contact with the reality and stop with the issue of politicizing health. There is no oath that I took to commit suicide. I took an oath to protect life. That life, as my, my colleague has just said, includes me. So there is no way you can send me into a war without giving me the proper armory for me to, to perform. So there is no time I remember taking an oath to, to, to commit suicide. Mm. Even these politicians, including our president, took an oath to protect Kenyans. 
How do you want me to protect uh, my fellow Kenyan when I'm not protected? The law does not allow that. So I want to tell him that we cannot uh, go into a war without uh, the armory that is required for us to perform our functions effectively. All right, so then the question would be, uh, is the main issue that has made you go on strike purely to do with the PPEs or is there more? If you are to give a list, what are some of those things that must be fulfilled before you go back to work? Number one, as I speak to you, I want to tell you that uh, we, we, we don't have a medical cover. Amid is this pandemic, uh, we, are, we, are all, we are all exposed to, to this virus. But you realize that the people saying that we should hold this strike so that uh, the issues of BBI can go through are not, are not realistic. This, if, if I was a victim of, of COVID-19 today, I will I'll land in a private institution because where we work in, in public institutions, they don't have uh, the, the capacity to even, even nurse, uh, nurse or, uh, or take care of this patient. So once I'm in that private institution, I'll cater for my bills. So when we are saying that give us a comprehensive medical cover, is that too much to ask? Suppose now we have our colleagues who have succumbed to COVID-19. We have ended up uh, contributing so that we can, we can uh, see their families come up, we can see them, uh, give them a good send-off, and also clear their bills in hospitals amounting to millions of money. Is that too much to ask from, uh, from our employer? Look at how much we are exposed at our, uh, at our workplaces. We are telling the employer, look at our welfare, by at least increasing our, our, our risk allowance. Going to a private institution just to consult a doctor, you spend more than 10,000 shillings, but you are given a risk allowance of 3,850 per month. Is that realistic? All right, we so what you're saying, if I hear you correctly, kind of uh, Boaz, yes. if I hear you correctly, what you're saying yes. is if you got medical cover today, you'd go back to work. If we get medical cover, if we get risk allowance, if, if, if we, we get additional uh, staff uh, nurses employed, if our colleagues in UHC that have now served for more than six months and they haven't been paid, all the issues that we have tabled before our employer are addressed, then we are ready to go back to work. All right, let me hear from uh, Peterson Washira. What are some of those things that you also say that must be fulfilled for you to go back to work? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Michael. And uh, let me start by saying that uh, it's good that Kenyans understand where we are coming from, because sometimes when they hear us ask for a risk allowance, they may think that we are greedy and selfish. We are working in an environment that can be better described uh, by two young health workers who have died recently, Dr. Mogusu and the clinic officer with Victor Tioni. Dr. Mugusu was under a contract under universal health coverage working in Machakos County. He had not been paid uh, for five months. He did not uh, have a medical cover. And upon his death, there was no group life cover to be able to cover him so that his family will not live in destitution. He was not provided with the right PPE and he did not have money to purchase his own because he was not paid for five months. Uh, Victor Tioni, a 32-year-old clinic officer from Nandi also was not provided with the right PPE, so he contracted the infection from the hospital facility. He then uh, had to be hospitalized. He could not get a bed in any public facility for ICU care, so he was admitted in St. Luke's Hospital uh, in Eldoret. Uh, there is no cover that could, could actually pay. We had to contribute. I'm sure you saw that we were even publicly contributing. And I want to thank all those who came through, the Senator Nandi, the Governor Nandi, and the others. And then upon his death, he was buried just uh, the other day. And there is no group life cover to cater for him. So that is the environment we are working for. So what we are proposing are solutions to make that environment safe for us. Because, uh, you see, we are very patient, actually, as health workers, because uh, the Occupational Safety and Health Act provides that once you realize that your environment presents imminent risk to your health, then you are supposed to vacate immediately and inform your employer. But we have waited for seven months. So we are asking that, number one, we know that all the health workers, 99% of those who have died, 
belong to the vulnerable category as defined by the World Health Organization. Those with pre-existing disease, those uh, with, uh, or, or who are aged, sorry, and those who are pregnant. We are asking, why don't you exempt them so that we don't have other, um, so many more dying? Because these are actually the experienced guys and they are the teachers. Number two, we are asking for that medical cover. If probably Victor Tioni and Dr. Muguzu had a medical cover, it would not have delayed to have them in ICU care and probably, just probably, would have saved them. We are asking these colleagues that you employed on contract, please pay them their salary for five months so that they can afford to eat well. Mm. They cannot have psychological stress because both of that contributes to low immunity, which of course will propagate a critical disease when you get the coronavirus. And so that they can also purchase their PPEs like we are doing when they do not have the PPEs from the government. Mm. Then we are saying, give us a risk allowance that is enhanced So because we have been using our money to purchase our PPEs when you have not been able to provide us. And then we are saying that there is, we have seen that we have had over 100, over 100 strikes and the strikes rotate about minor issues about ineffective management of human resources in health. Right. And so we're asking, why don't you give us a health service commission mm. like we have seen in all other critical sectors to ensure that there are people who every day are dedicated to managing the welfare of the health workers mm. and that will ensure that we do not have this disruption of services because of very minute issues. Issues of promotions are issues provided in law and in policies. Right. Issues and of when to pay the salary. Mm. And, and so, and, and, for and us, and these are the bare minimums because they all contribute to the cycle of a safe environment for us to be able to work in, mm. and so that we can make it safe for the patients, and so that we don't infect them. All right, and, and truth be told, all COVID has done is expose and bring to the surface issues that we've been, uh, you know, suffering in the health sector. But this has literally is what they would say is uh, the straw that broke the camel's back. So, boys, how did we get here? What was the journey that got us here? Because for us to find a long-term solution, we need to find out how did we get here so that we don't repeat. How did we end up here? I can tell you we ended up here because the employers and the government at large has, uh, has uh, misplaced its priorities. The worst mistake we did uh, is, is uh, I know many could argue in different ways, but to me I normally say that when we devolved health, that is when we politicized it, and being one of the key issues that uh, the government uh, is looking at, then it has to prioritize properly. So when we, we, when we, we misplace our priorities by bringing other issues and we left health uh, just hanging there, then that is where we missed. Even, uh, even before COVID, these are issues that we have been asking for. Whatever we are asking for is not, is, is not, did not come because uh, COVID is here. When you look at the, even the previous strikes, the CBA that has not been concluded includes our, our uh, the risk allowances in, is part of the CBA. Mm. But what has happened, it is almost four years, the government is not willing to, to settle this issue so that we can forget about the strikes for four to five years to come. Mm. The issue of our medical cover, these are issues that we've been asking even before we came to this strike. But for how long are we going to come to the table, you give us an offer, then you don't implement it. We cannot continue suffering. We cannot continue to see our colleagues die uh, on the expense that the government is not willing to take uh, the necessary measures that well, is required. What would you say? We um, asked for boss, a health service commission. Th that's true, and, and I mean, it's mm -hmm. four years, uh, uh, four long years. But, Boaz, what would you say to those, including uh, the former Prime Minister Raila, who say that the timing is wrong? This is not the right time to go on strike. I, I want to state that there is no there is nowhere in the calendar you had, whether you start from January to December that says this is the right time for you to demand for your right. Any day, any time, as long as you feel that your environment that you are working in, your your right has in, has been infringed, you have a right to ask for it. It is there in the constitution. That is so true. the constitution does not say that this is the time for you to go to strike. 
Yeah, that so is what true, I'm saying, but, simply but, what but I'm saying those, is... And, and I want you to address yes. it from the angle of those who feel that the medical officers going on yes. strike now because of COVID-19 and the burden that we have on the healthcare system, uh, they're being insensitive. What would you say to them? Maybe there's uh, the backstory that they may not understand. So what would you answer to those who feel that you're being insensitive going on strike now? You know, what is, what is ailing them is ignorance. And I, I've, I've started by saying that when they misplace these priorities, we are also Kenyans. They forget that when they are saying that we, 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 we are punishing Kenyans, they forget that we are also Kenyans. Mm. Does it mean that when Boaz is on strike, Boaz has relatives who are in hospitals and suffering and we are paying bills in private institutions. Mm. So let them not forget that when we are agitating so that we can get a good environment in public institutions where the common monarchy can afford, we are asking for too much. And that is why I said we cannot uh, commit suicide on the expense that this was around. There is nothing called wrong timing. Okay. This is actually the best time for them to realize that there is, there is an issue that should be addressed. All right. Uh, let me hear from Peterson. Boaz says that what got us here is misplaced priorities. And we've also had that narrative uh, go forward, particularly with those who feel that even the BBI, for example, is not a priority compared to uh, taking care of our health system. What is it, in your opinion, Peterson, is how did we get here? What, what do you feel got us where we are now? Uh, so I think since the start of this pandemic, we have come out almost uh, twice a month. We have given advisories to the government. And uh, even before that, let me even go some five years before this, uh, we were sent to West Africa. I led a team that uh, went to help uh, West Africa fight Ebola. I was in Sierra Leone and I was the team leader. And upon coming back, we gave a report with recommendations that would actually help Kenya to avoid the same scenario that happened in Sierra Leone. The recommendations that we gave were not, taken, were not actually considered, except that we were employed, uh, those who are not in government were actually employed. And our recommendations were that this team of bold health workers with the right mix, please put it together and an emergency response unit as the workforce, so that once we get into a pandemic, they can be able to conduct the three or four important things you do to a human resource to give them confidence to be able to work. One was so that they can be able to train and train very fast. The second thing was that um, uh, you provide medical cover so that they feel confident that even if I were to get to fall sick, I will actually have a luxury be seen and managed in the best way. When we were in West Africa, I would actually be lifted with an air ambulance to the best hospital in the world. The third thing was provide them with the right PPE. And all these things, plus now the compensation, which comes in terms of risk allowance, um, actually confers confidence on health workers that they are actually protected and they can work without even having psychological stress. So we have had some structural problems in the health sector that has led to this. Number one, Health sector has not been a priority. It has always been treated as a liability. And I would like to thank the president because uh, making it one of the big four agenda probably brought it to, to some limelight, uh, sort of. Though right now we may say that uh, they, they are failing in actually prioritizing uh, uh, as it actually should be. There is an Abuja declaration that Kenya is uh, a party to and they signed that in every budgeting year, 15% is going to go to the health sector. If we had a 15% of the budget to the health sector, we would not have problems with medical cover, with the protective gear, with the risk allowance, and what have you. So it's a systematic problem that has actually um, hit the health sector. Mm -hmm. And what we are seeing now, it's only being exposed because we have reached a point where it has started even consuming us as the health workers, and it has actually transformed, instead of providing health to Kenyans, it is actually uh, threatening the health of Kenyans by the fact that we, the healthcare workers, have become the ones now infecting the community. And right. that is how we reach this point where we as the health workers, because we also swore to be the advocates of the patients. Mm. 
we decided that in that spirit of advocacy for the patients, for the public good, we must get out and bring uh, out the issues to the public so that also the public can take the leaders to account and the leaders can be able to come and uh, prioritize this and handle the challenges so that we can once again make the health sector safe for both we, the health workers, and the patient who comes to a facility for us to be able to see. Because right. if the patient is coming to get coronavirus from my facility, mm. then there is actually no need for me to be there. All right, and uh, Boaz, in the bigger picture of things, her health is already devolved. That's something that we are definitely not going back to. In your opinion, what would you suggest the best way to utilize and ensure that at a county level, all health workers are taken care of? It is a priority so that moving forward, we don't have to go back and forth on these strikes, particularly at a time like this. I want to say that uh, uh, this, uh, we were invited to give views on, uh, on what could help and uh, these uh, regular strikes from the health uh, workforce. We gave suggestions and we say that uh, as we come into constitutional amendments under the BBI, we want a, a constitutional health service commission. This was going to solve the issues because when you look uh, on all the strikes that we've come out, it is because of the human resource aspect. So we said if we have a constitutional health service commission that will look into the issues of, of the, the, the human resource and uh, uh, cutting across all health workers so that at the county levels, the governors are left to, to equip those institutions to ensure that they are up to, that we have medicines and we have the necessary amenities that are required. And then the national government and the constitution, to, the, the, the commission to deal with matters of human resource. We couldn't be having uh, this uh, issue. One county has promoted, the other one has not. One county has paid salaries, the other one for six months has not paid salaries. So these discrepancies are working and we are working in, in, in the same nation in different, in in the same environments, despite the fact that we have uh, different counties, does not, does not add up. And that is why, for us, we are seeing that if we have a constitutional uh, health service commission, is going uh, to at least give, uh, give a chance to, to end this issue of uh, strikes now and then. Then another thing is uh, the, the president should take charge now. We are in a pandemic. We are in a situation that he, as the father of this nation, should take charge let him uh, uh, rethink about this issue. He has been silent about uh, the, our, our strike and what we are agitating for. Even during his address uh, on the Mashuja Day, yes, he spoke on what the government has done, but he didn't speak on what is ailing us and how it can be solved. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the issues that we want him to address and ensure that we go back to our workplaces as soon as possible to help our colleague Kenyans. All right, gentlemen, we're going to take a short break right here on Morning Express, and then we come back and wind up. It's now 25 minutes after 8. We take a short break, and when we come back, we'll wind up on the health issues and also look at some international news.